Have you ever pondered over how the chaotic and intense life of an author can directly influence and mold their incredible literary creations? This concept is not a far-fetched one, as several great minds of literature have lived lives as complex and intriguing as their written works, their experiences often bleeding into narratives and character arcs. Today we'll be discussing the life and works of Truman Capote. For those of you unfamiliar with the name, Truman Capote is an icon, a stalwart of American literature whose reputation precedes him. Born Truman Streckfuss Persons in New Orleans, Louisiana in 1924, Capote's life was a roller coaster of emotions and experiences, the echoes of which can be found resonating within his books. His life was a tapestry of colorful experiences entwined with his own unique perspective on the world. From his troubled childhood in the Deep South to his time in New York City as a prominent social figure, every phase of Capote's life held an exquisite tale that eventually found its way into his writing. His life was as intricate, gripping and filled with unexpected twists as his works. With a writing career that spanned nearly four decades and substantial contributions to the field of literature, Capote's life was anything but ordinary. His experiences, triumphs, travails and tragedies shaped his perspectives and influenced his writing, giving us masterpieces that still captivate readers worldwide. This richly layered and carefully woven narrative of Truman Capote's life gives us a deeper understanding of his works and their deeply embedded roots in his personal journey. This is his story. Born in New Orleans in 1924 as Truman Streckfuss Persons, Capote's early life was anything but ordinary. This outstanding author, later known to the world as Truman Capote, had a genesis story that was as complex as the narratives he later penned. Truman's story begins in the vibrant cityscape of New Orleans, a place steeped in a rich history that would later become a pivotal backdrop to Capote's unique narrative voice. Born in the Roaring Twenties he was christened Truman Streckfuss Persons, a name as unique as the man he would become. However like a dark cloud looming over his early life his parents decided to part ways. There was not a peaceful event, and left scars on young Truman. The outcome of their unfortunate separation was that Truman was sent away from his birthplace to Alabama. Here, he was taken in by his mother's relatives. This phase of life was not easy for him. He was just a child but experienced things beyond his tender age. Neglect became a usual part of his daily life. Loneliness, an overwhelming part of his existence. He was isolated, devoid of the love and affection that a child deserves. These experiences of his early life left an indelible mark on Capote's psyche and they would later emerge as powerful themes in his literary works. The loneliness, the neglect he experienced in his early years, became the cornerstone of his storytelling, making his writings hauntingly relatable and deeply poignant. Raised by his mother's relatives in Alabama after his parents' divorce, he experienced a childhood filled with neglect and loneliness, themes that would later permeate his writings. In 1945, Capote's journey into the literary world began with the publication of his first short story, Miriam. This was the year when the world was still reeling from the effects of the Second World War. Amidst this turmoil, a new voice emerged from the literary landscape of America, a voice as distinctive and original as Truman Capote's. Capote was a mere 21 years old when he published Miriam, a short story that was as much a revelation about the author's unique storytelling skills as it was an engrossing narrative in its own right. The story was a rich tapestry woven with elements of suspense, emotion, and vivid imagery, all of which would later come to define Capote's distinctive style. What made work stand out was his uncanny ability to blend the realms of fiction and reality with such finesse that it was often difficult for the readers to distinguish between the two. His stories were not merely plots and characters, they were living experiences that the readers could step into and immerse themselves in completely. This fusion of the real and the imagined in his narrative was what made it so compelling. Readers were drawn into the worlds he crafted, held captive by the magic of his words. Critics, too, were quick to recognize his talent. His work was lauded for its innovation and creativity, setting the stage for a career that would span over four decades and include countless accolades. His ability to weave tales so compelling they blurred the line between fiction and reality quickly caught the attention of readers and critics alike. Capote's breakthrough arrived in 1951 with his debut novel, Other Voices, Other Rooms. This piece of art, a true testament to his literary genius, was not merely a novel. In essence, it was a daring proclamation that sought to challenge societal norms and prejudices. The book was considered controversial during its time, 
a time when literature itself was seen as a mirror to society, carefully reflecting on its attributes and limitations. Yet Capote, with his undeniable for storytelling, took the risk of discussing the unspoken, the forbidden, the taboo. His debut novel, a dark southern gothic tale, was thought-provoking and riveting, pulling readers into a world where every sentence was an exploration of identity and the human psyche. What made it even more controversial was its candid talk about homosexuality, a theme that was almost unheard of in the conservative climate of the 50s. This brave move was not only revolutionary but also an audacious stand in favor of freedom, equality and acceptance, a stance that was rare at that time. The unapologetic portrayal of these themes throughout the novel was done with such finesse that it was impossible for it not to capture attention. It not only catapulted Capote into the literary spotlight, but also solidified his place as a fearless writer who refused to shy away from the truth. His bold portrayal of these sensitive issues through literature acted as an eye-opener, making the society question its own beliefs and prejudices. It was a brave move in the conservative climate of the 50s. By the late 50s, Truman Capote had established himself as a prominent figure in the literary world, earning recognition far and wide. The man was a household name, whose fame could be attributed to his flamboyant personality, sharp wit, and a unique way of narrating stories that was entirely his own. Known for his lively aura and impressive intellect, Capote was a captivating presence that could not be ignored. His written works were a testament to his talent, providing readers with a glimpse into his intriguing mind. One of these works, Breakfast at Tiffany's, published in 1958, was a significant milestone in his flourishing career. Beyond the glamour and glitz embedded in its narrative, the novella unveiled Capote's ability to weave together complex characters and riveting plot lines seamlessly. This particular piece of literature allowed him to further solidify his standing in literary circles, making him a force to be reckoned with. However, Capote was far from the world of literature was his canvas, and he was ready to paint his masterpiece. It was his next work, a revolutionary novel, that would redefine the boundaries of literature. His upcoming creation was set to challenge existing norms and expectations, promising to deliver a literary experience like no other. In 1965, In Cold Blood, a novel based on the gruesome murder of a Kansas family, took the world by storm. This literary masterpiece was created by the renowned American author Truman Capote. With this novel, Capote revolutionized the world of journalism and literature, carving a niche of his own. He audaciously called this work a non-fiction novel, a term that was unheard of at the time. It was an innovative blend of factual journalism and narrative storytelling, a combination was as intriguing as it was unprecedented. Capote's genius lay not just in the merging of these two distinct genres, but also in his meticulous attention to detail and commitment to accuracy. The creation of In Cold Blood was not a task undertaken lightly. Capote spent six long years in painstaking research, conducting in-depth interviews, and putting together a narrative that was as compelling as it was disconcerting. He dove headfirst into the dark and complex world of a Kansas family's murder, unearthing details that left readers across the globe spellbound. Despite the immense success this novel brought him, his work in cold blood came to be known as a catalyst for his downfall. It was not just a book, it was an emotional, mental and professional journey for Capote, one that led him to the pinnacle of success, but also sowed seeds of his eventual downfall. The book requiring six years of meticulous research and interviews proved to be both his greatest success and the catalyst for his downfall. The tremendous exertion of penning in cold blood had a profound impact on Truman Capote, leading to his enhanced reliance on alcohol and other narcotics. This monumental effort of crafting such a chilling narrative had a detrimental effect on the author's personal life and his physical health. This novel, which was based on the gruesome murders of the Clutter family, consumed Capote, draining him both emotionally and physically. As he delved deeper into the psyche of the murderers, he too spiraled into a dark abyss, unable to extricate himself from the psychological torment, drifting towards substance abuse to numb the pain. His subsequent works, although earnest attempts, couldn't match the critical acclaim and public fascination that In Cold Blood had garnered. His later books seemed to lack the raw intensity and captivating allure of his masterpiece, leading to lukewarm responses from critics and readers alike. Each passing year saw a gradual wane in his creative output. His deteriorating health mirrored this decline in literary success. As the years rolled on, Capote's health issues seemed to multiply, each one taking a toll on his frail body. 
In 1984, a tragic year in the literary world, when Capote was just 59 years old, he breathed his last. He left us far too soon, but not without leaving behind a literary legacy that continues to resonate. His work, especially, In Cold Blood, remains a testament to his genius, and continues to be celebrated even decades after his passing. So, what is Truman Capote's enduring legacy? Truman Capote was an exceptional individual, far more than just a writer, he was a pathfinder in every essence of the word. Capote had an uncanny knack for storytelling, often pushing the conventional boundaries of literature, and leading his readers on a journey of exploration and discovery. Capote's works were an embodiment of his experiences and observations. Being deeply rooted in his own life journey, his literature painted a realistic and striking picture of American society, often highlighting the many faces phases of it. His writing was always a transportive experience, drawing readers into the world he crafted with careful precision, from the sultry languid atmosphere of the South presented in his masterpiece, Other Voices Other Rooms, to the chilling and harsh realities of life he portrayed in In Cold Blood, Capote wove stories that were as varied as they were compelling. His narratives were a window into the diverse aspects of American society, each tale a testament to his meticulous observation and insightful understanding of human behavior. His writing was not only about the places, but also about the people, and their intricate emotions. His ability to capture the multifaceted essence of human nature, shedding light on the joys, sorrows, triumphs and tragedies of life, made his work both influential and timeless. Capote's legacy is one of literary greatness. His work continues to inspire and influence a new generation of writers, and his contribution to the world of literature is immeasurable. His ability to capture the essence of human nature remains unparalleled. Capote's life was a kaleidoscope of brilliance and despair, reflected in the pages of his works. It was a vivid tapestry woven with strands of scintillating genius and threads of profound despair. The radiance of his intellect was juxtaposed with the abyss of his personal anguish, creating a profound contrast that embodied the essence of his existence. In the meandering course of his life, he traversed through the peaks of literary success, as as the valleys of personal struggle. His narratives, a reflection of his life, remain as influential today as they were when they first emerged from his prolific pen. Each tale, meticulously crafted and profoundly insightful, is a testament to his unique storytelling prowess. They serve as a beacon of inspiration igniting a spark in the minds of readers, stirring up of thoughts and challenging the conventional perceptions. Each word he penned was born out of his immense intellectual prowess and his deep personal anguish. His stories, oscillating between moments of profound insight and utter despair, echoed the tumultuous journey of his own life. Capote's creative brilliance was not deterred by his personal struggles. Instead, it thrived amidst them, finding expression in the poignant prose and unforgettable narratives that he crafted. Even in the face of personal turmoil, Truman Capote's pen never faltered, etching indelible marks on the canvas of American literature.